Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, councillors. Are we ready to live stream? Thank you. Uh, thank you all for attending um, Castle Morpeth Local Area Council on Monday the 9th of May. Um, we go into the agenda. We don't have planning today. Uh, apologies for absence, please. Yes, Chair, I've received apologies from councillors Dickinson and Darwin. I have one from Councillor Bourne. Are there any from the floor? Councillor Dodds just walked in. Oh, Councillor Dodds Dodd is here. I'll, I'll give you time to get in. I better wait till he arrives, just in case it's Dick. He moves very slowly. <laughs> it's not right you sitting up there, you should be across here. <laughs> uh, correct. Good afternoon, Councillor. Uh, disclosures of members' interests, okay, do we? Thank you, that's why you should be sitting up here. <laughs> I was just saying to make sure you were on your toes. Uh, minutes of the last meeting held on Monday the 14th of February. You've all had read them and seen them. Um, have we any questions on the minutes? Can we agree the minutes? Thank you. Thank you. I know, I know. <laughs> And as my <laughs> right-hand person, the 14th of March again, they've been circulated and you will all have read them. Can we all agree those? Is there any matters arising from them? Thank you. Disclosures of members' interests, we've done that. None whatsoever. Public question time. Have we any mem questions for the members of public? No. Petitions. Now, you have to excuse us a bit on this one because it's been so long since we've uh, had petitions that uh, we, we may get things not correctly, but uh, hopefully we should get there. Uh, the first petition, um, we have Mandy, I think. Yeah. Uh, if you would like to give your name, introduce the petition, and you have five minutes to, to introduce that, please. My name is Mandy Trotter and I'm a resident of Raid Row in the parish of Choppington, Northumberland. On behalf of fellow residents and the wider community, I would like to thank the members of the Castle Morpeth Local Area Council for allowing me to present this request to consider a pavement cycleway connecting Raid Row Drive to Barrington Road. Raid Row Drive is the connecting road from Barrington Industrial Estate through our residential community, avoiding the town centre and pro providing access to the A1147 and the Spine Road. This is a very busy road, short stretches of road with blind bends supporting vehicles from industrial traffic to horses. At present, there's only a limited stretch of pavement for those on foot. For approximately 400 metres, there's no pavement and no alternative but to walk on the road against oncoming traffic. Jumping from the road to the grass verge is unacceptable, especially with children, dogs or those less able and impossible for wheelchair users or whilst pushing a pushchair. To the west, it links our community with Bedlington Station, Bedlington and Choppington. Along this route, it gives access to local shops and transport and provides a walkway to children's activities, a community centre Gallagher Park into the residential areas of Bower Grange and Heritage Gardens. To the east, it links our community with Boomer Sund, Stake Ford and the A1147 and gives access to TT Electronics Well and Components, the Rutherford Cancer Centre and Earth Balance. We accept Barrington Industrial Estate as part of our community and understand that access is needed to the Spine Road along Red Road Drive. 
remind us of supporting our request and have pledged a contribution of £1,500 towards the costs of the scheme should it go ahead. We are delighted that the, the railway station at Bedlington Station is to reopen, offering further opportunities to seek employment. A pavement cycleway would provide a safer route that connects facilities and links communities to the new rail link rather than over the Welland Bridge with its increased traffic heading to car parks. Our petition, signed by residents and community, has exceeded our expectations and currently stands at 286 signatures plus those on paper. It serves to show how strongly people of the area feel about a pavement cycleway along Red Road Drive to keep them safe. Recent COVID restrictions have seen an increase in numbers of people making use of this outdoor space for health, well-being and social purposes, becoming less dependent on their cars, thus reducing pollution and extending their outdoor activities. Pavements are for pedestrians. There should always be sufficient space for a wheelchair or twin-seat child buggy to pass comfortably. A pedestrian should not be forced to step into the road. Pedestrians are the most vulnerable of all road users. We owe each other a duty of care when out on the roads and should take reasonable care when walking, cycling, riding or driving to avoid collisions with other road users. In summary, we are striving to be synonymous with Northumberland Cycling and Walking Board June 2020, Northumberland's Local Transport Plan 2011 to 2026, promotes safer and healthier travel. It promotes walking at points 8.32 to 8.36 and promotes cycling points 8.37 to 8.39. Geared up, promotes walking and cycling to improve the health, well-being and the local economy of Northumberland. The aspiration for 2025 is to deliver a five-star cycle and walking experience enjoyed by increasing numbers of our own residents and the majority of journeys in Northumberland under a mile will be walked and under five miles will be cycled. This is not a complaint at the volume of traffic using Red Road Drive. It is a request from residents and members of the local community for a pavement cycleway to rid the anxiety and make it safe and fit for purpose for all that use Red Road Drive. On behalf of the residents of Red Row and the local community, I would like to thank the members of the committee for their time in considering this request and look forward to a favourable outcome. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Mandy. Um, now, members of the committee, we cannot discuss this item until we have had a uh, officer's report, uh, which will obviously come back to a, a future meeting. But the um, ward councillor um, can talk about this. Uh, it's Councillor Foster, but I think it's more complicated than that. If you want to introduce that, Julie. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I just want to thank Mandy for bringing this. Um, it's not new. It's something I fully support. It's something I've asked for over the years. And I know Neil's looking at me. He's very aware that I've asked for this over the years. Um, unfortunately, cost implications seem to make it impossible to do with the utilities underneath, etc. However, um, ju just to explain about the area, the Barrington Road um, area, Red Row, etc., Part of it is in my electoral division, but most of the residents who live around there are either in the Sleekburn or East Bedlington electoral divisions. The, ro the, the road going through is quite well used by larger vehicles who use the industrial estate. Ramondas was mentioned, and it's lovely that they've offered some money towards it. That's fantastic. But members will remember that I have brought issues with regards to the vehicles on that road to this committee under planning in the past because of the number, the sheer volume of large vehicles using that road. So if we're forcing pedestrians onto the road, they are at risk from the cars, from these large vehicles, and we're not always talking about vehicles abiding by the speed limit. So there is a, a big risk from that alone. 
expecting pedestrians to walk on the grass might be not so bad in the summer months, but in the wet months, it's not nice, plodging through muddy grass. Dog fouling is an issue in our area. It really is. So people would be walking on dog muck from those who don't pick up after the dogs on the grass. There's a bridge that connects the area with Bedlington Station. It hasn't been made traffic light controlled and one way at a time because it has been seen as dangerous um, to have two way traffic and it was deemed a walk to school route. It's uphill. So those who have mobility difficulties would probably prefer to walk on that flat ground. Those who have to push wheelchairs, push prams and push chairs, again, they're faced with an awful task of pushing uphill on that bridge. So again, they're going to prefer the route that we do desperately need a path with. It's an access to employment. We've got quite a few employers on the Barrington Road and Barrington Road Industrial Estate. There's also a popular cafe. But again, residents from that side of the uh, bridge, the Stakeford side, they have to walk on the road. It's the only way they can access it unless they go over the bridge, walk along and then back around doing the long way around. It's going to be a, nat an, excuse me, a natural route to the train station for a lot of people. Instead of going up over the bridge along and then cutting up, it's actually easier to go up through in the industrial estate to where the entrance is, where there's going to be parking. Um, I can't remember the name of the street that it's behind, but that's going to be a, a nice natural progression through to the train station. So again, there's going to be a demand from people who are going to use the rail station to get to work. We're wanting to promote green travel. We are very much for dealing with the climate change and getting people out on foot or on cycles is a goal for this council. And it's a goal for the people that we represent as well for their health and their well-being. And by not providing this path, we're, we're taking that away from those very people that we want to enable to be able to do that travel by foot or by cycle. So I would say, please, can we look at this again? Can we try and come up with some solutions, perhaps contacting the other ward councillors? I'm happy to put a contribution towards it. I'm sure the other ward councillors would, but obviously I can't speak for them, would have to speak to them direct. But this really does need to be dealt with. It's not a huge stretch of road to be dealt with. It's long for somebody walking, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge length of uh, grassed area that needs to be dealt with to put a path in there. There's a path before it, there's a path after it, but there's just no access between those two paths. So please have a good look at this. Support Mandy and all the other residents who really do need this. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for that, Julie. And thank you, Mandy, for giving um, the petition, reading the, introducing the petition and bringing it in. Um, I think really with this case, uh, I would like to ask the relevant officers to uh, to look at this um, liaise with uh, the the counters in the, that ward and bring back a um, a report to a, a future meeting. Great, thank you for that. Thank you. We go on to our second petition um, on this one because. We have a report on this. Um, we will. I will ask the peti lead petitioner, which is uh, Mrs. Oakley, uh, to introduce it. Uh, Mrs. Oakley will have five minutes um, to introduce the report. Uh, members can then question um, the petitioner, and then we will go to officer, which uh, I think is Neil Snowden, to give give the report, and then councillors can obviously ask questions and debate uh, the report. Uh, so, Mrs Oakley, if you'd like to start. Thank you. Firstly, thank you for affording me the time to make the case for a speed reduction and safer crossing along the bypass road near Northgate. 
I would like to give a bit of background on this. We first contacted the elected councillor on the matter in spring of last year. After having no response, I raised a freedom of information on the matter, and it became apparent there had not been clarity on exactly what had been requested. At this point in 2022, Councillor Towns informed me that it had been rejected because not enough people used the road. Our request is supported by residents, Hebron Parish Council and Northgate Hospital. The bypass road is a busy 60 mile an hour road. With the County Council's emphasis on more walking and cycling, it's imperative that crossings are safe. I've had numerous parents come to me concerned with the crossings and many think it's just a matter of time before something fatal happens. They feel let down by their previous attempts and feel that they're not listened to. There are two large new estates, the Meadows and St Andrews Gardens. We've got Northgate Hospital and the wider population of Fairmoor who use this crossing to walk into Morbeth on a daily basis. These estates host families with children of school age, patients from Northgate with complex needs, all feel they're playing Russian roulette on a daily basis. This problem is only going to get worse. Northgate Hospital is increasing their capacity significantly. As well as extra patients who will be using this road to cross, there will also be a significant extra traffic using the bypass road to go to and from work. In addition, there are plans to build hundreds of houses just off the St George's roundabout. This roundabout will be used to service this housing estate and traffic will be filtering onto the bypass road onto the A1. Children who walk to school on their own have to make a judgment call on the speed of traffic travelling along the bypass road and make a judgment when they feel it's safe to cross. We know the damage a car can do travelling even 40 miles an hour, never mind 60 miles an hour, should a child be hit by it. Parents have felt their voices are not being heard, they felt no one cared and this is why the petition was started. So their voice could be heard and their attempts to protect their children from the dangers of the road. Parents want the speed reduction, uh, the speed reduced between St George's roundabout and Northgate roundabout. In addition, they want a safer crossing on that road. Whilst we've been told that the zebra crossing would be most unlikely to happen, there is a zebra crossing on the roundabout on the B1337 in Morbeth at County Hall, which is also on a roundabout. There's also an argument for a speed reduction based on noise reduction for the residents of the Meadows. A similar speed reduction is in force on the road coming into Morbeth besides Southfields. If we are to encourage families to walk to school, for children to walk to school, then there needs, it needs to be safe, and currently it's not. You cannot expect parents to want their children to cross that road without prop proper safe speed reductions and a safe place to cross. Some of the comments from uh, parents are, this is an accident waiting to happen. Does someone have to get killed before it's happened? I'm a nursing assistant at Northgate Hospital and walk down to Morbeth a few times a week with patients. This road is very stressful to cross for patients and staff, especially at busy times. Northumberland County Councils have ambitions to increase levels of walking and cycling across the county, improve the safety of the crossings at the roundabout would help encourage more walking and cycling between the new estates at Fairmoor and Morbeth, into Morbeth, especially for children. It is our hope that all councillors can work together to ensure our children are safe, parents feel confident and able to allow their children to walk to and from school, to achieve the wider goals of the council, increasing levels of walking and cycling. I thank you for your time and I'm open to any questions. Thank you for that. Um, members, are there any questions to Mrs Oakley? Or do you want to go to the report? Great. Um, I think it's Neil who is going to take this report. So, um, in the report, you'll, you'll have all seen a copy of the report. So, thank you very much for um, talking about the issues you're faced with there. Um, what, we're, what we're going to be doing is carrying out a, um, what we call a safe routes to safe routes to school assessment to check um, to identify any potential improvements, such as any improvements to the crossing area you've mentioned at the roundabout, um, any additional signage such as pedestrian crossing warning signs, um, and also considering a reduced speed limit. Um, but we hope that for that <clears throat> that. Um, assessment to be carried out before, obviously before the summer holidays, ideally before the uh, this current half term, um, and then once that's, that's done we'll be able to feedback with any solutions going forward. I do know there's a speed survey out there at the minute as well, so um, once we get that data we can, we can send that to you for information. Can 
comes to the towns as well, of course. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, members, would you like to uh, to counter towns? Thank you, Chair, and um, thank you to, to Mrs Oakley and also to, to Neyland Highways. Um, it, it, it's, this has been a bit of an issue. I think that really the problem here has been that when the bypass was designed initially, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that a sufficient thought was given to the fact that that area was being designated for uh, housing. Um, I suspect the design might have been slightly different uh, had that been fully taken into account. And I'm no expert on it, so that's just my guess. Um, I've looked at this for, for quite some time, as, as Mrs Oakley has just said, it's, it's taken far too long to get to, a, to, to even this point, and I actually uh, encouraged uh, and support this, uh, this petition to get some action on it. Um, it was only a, a couple of weeks ago when I had a meeting with Robin from, from Highways um, uh, uh, at the site to go and have a look uh, with him myself. The problem with the road there is it's quite a large roundabout, as, as most people in the room will know. Um, traffic slows down very much to approach the roundabout, so at that point it's not as if they are driving at 60 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. But what I noticed and, and what have, I have done myself coming off that, that roundabout is uh, you know, drivers are apt to speed up as you're coming around because it's quite a large roundabout. It's not a mini roundabout. Um, and I think the, the danger, if anything, is, is not from the traffic approaching the roundabout, but from the traffic leaving the roundabout. And I'm personally not 100% uh, convinced that a pedestrian crossing as you come off the roundabout would would actually make that junction any safer. My worry would be that it would make it less safe. Uh, Mrs Oakley's mentioned a, a roundabout uh, not far from here, which has a, a pedestrian crossing off it. I believe that the um, justification for that was you wouldn't ordinarily put a, a crossing there, but that is where people will cross the road. If you put the crossing further away from the roundabout, they would still cross the road at that point at the roundabout because that's historically where they crossed and I, as I said I do think the opportunity has been missed with the design of the, the roundabout in the first place so I, I welcome the report I welcome that there's some action I suspect strongly that residents will not see this as being uh, as answering their concerns particularly at this stage I think a reduced speed limit would would certainly help to some extent but I'm not totally convinced that just a reduced speed limit is really going to solve the problem because I think there's a, a far more significant issue in that there isn't really the space to deliver any different form of crossing there given the current design uh, and that's kind of the the conclusion of the of the conversation that I've had uh, with Robin so uh, I welcome it I'm not a highways designer so I don't know what the answer is but I'll be watching this very closely and and trying to ensure that uh, the concerns can be addressed as much as we reasonably can. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Thanks, Councillor Tones. Uh, Councillor Weirmouth. Thank you, Chair. I, just a few comments, really. Um, the, the petition makes uh, a suggestion that there would be a speed limit from all the way from St George's, what would be St George's roundabout, if ever we get the link road into, uh, into the estate to the, to the north of St George's. Um, and that we would be limiting speed from there. I'd just be a little bit cautious about that. I live on uh, the A1, off the A192 between Hepscott and Morpeth. We have a speed limit uh, of 40 miles an hour there that's been uh, put uh, on there. And, and we have had, uh, because of bus stops either side on the brow of the hill there at Barmer Bank, we've, we've had issues, one issue where I think where someone was struck by a car. But you've got to be very, very careful when you're imposing speed limits that they're actually logical uh, because if people don't see them as being logical then they ignore them and they ignore them from start to finish it's much better that you actually impose the speed limit from where it actually starts to become uh, a danger to, to the public and I would expect and I know that officers will uh, be looking at that um, in terms of the roundabout at Duke Park it's not a great example at all really to, to point to as Councillor Towns has mentioned there was a lot of, I think, work went in at the time to working out, well, how, how could that crossing be configured? I don't think it's, it's optimal in terms of the, the, how you would design it from a purely highways 
perspective for as council town says people will or would cross there uh, and that'll be a little bit the same with this uh, design and this roundabout uh, and, and one final thing i think uh, is that I can't remember uh, what status applications are in uh, in terms of housing development of that part of Morpeth has been, it was all supposed to be employment land. Uh, the NHS have had applications in, others have had applications in as well. I'm sure there'll be uh, potentially others that'll come along. We really should be looking at developers paying for this sort of infrastructure uh, and uh, that they, you know, that we do a little bit more to make sure that when they come along with some somewhat speculative developments sometimes that we make sure that we hold them to account that they make safe you know that there's a safe travel plan for for kids uh, and others who are wanting to uh, make their way in by foot and by uh, by cycle because uh, it's not really for us to retrospectively try and put things right uh, so those those would be the comments that i would make thank you thanks for that uh, council we most um Neil, did you want to come back on any of those points? No, I don't. Sorry, Mary. Sorry. Sorry, Murphy. Hi. Uh, question for Neil. So, the system that you're going to use to assess is the Safe Routes to School assessment. And it's great that there's a lot of parents up there who are advocating strongly for their children. That's wonderful. But I was really struck by um, the comment about the vulnerable patient from Northgate and the vulnerable residents of that establishment. And I'm really concerned about them and their welfare. And I'm wondering who's advocating for them. And I don't know whether that petition has been shared with the staff of that facility and those residents have had the opportunity to contribute but I'm just wondering why given that we know that in areas where there's potential danger areas on roads we see signs warning vulnerable elderly people about how to cross where to cross that it's risky to cross there and warning drivers about that I'm wondering whether this can be beefed up a bit given those people's needs and that this is not just about safety to school with able-bodied young people with their wits about them but perhaps quite vulnerable um, people who may have staff with them, but it could be a staff ratio of one to four or something like that. So um, I think we've got to remember their needs as well. Thank you. Councillor Towns. I think that, that, that's actually a very good point, given, given the facilities at Northgate. Um, but I think Councillor Wimath also made, made an excellent point. Again, I, I feel we've had a missed opportunity. We've missed a trick. Um, the developers have, have sold a large number of houses up there, obviously pocketed large amounts of profit and, uh, and should, have, should have really thought about this with, with planning at the time. Um, just another point to make, though, um, a, a slightly old fashioned, but old fashioned doesn't necessarily mean bad. Would the uh, it's a question really for Neil, would the, um, the, the safe route to school assessment also give uh, serious consideration to the deployment of a of a school of a crossing patrol if the numbers were to justify it. So, uh, if we were to get the speed limit down and actually have a have someone monitoring the crossing slightly further along, perhaps away from the roundabout, uh, is that something that will be taken into consideration in the assessment? Yes, it could be. Um, the issue I had is. As Councillor we have touched on, it's it's the desire lane, the, the crossing at Duca Park. It's on that desire lane. So if you if you put a crossing point in away from that desire lane, it's unlikely people will use it. Um, but certainly the the safe routes to school assessment will will look at issues for other vulnerable users, which you've mentioned. Um, and it will, will we will consider whether it meets the criteria for a school crossing patrol. But getting a school crossing patrol is another story. It's that really difficult to recruit. Um, we've got a lot, of, a lot of vacancies across the counties. Um, so that, that, I mean, it may be the criteria, but getting someone to carry out the role would be a different story. It'd be, it's really difficult to recruit, as I say. So if anybody knows anybody who might be interested across the county, please let us know and uh, send applications out and what have you. Thanks, Neil. Neil, can I ask, um, you're obviously doing this report, have you a, a time scale on it? Yeah, as I said, we'll try and, certainly could try and get the, the safe route to school check done before the summer holders, um, maybe before the, uh, the, the path term. Thanks, sir. Uh, right, um, committee, it, um, 
it's up to the committee to decide what course of action you want to take, whether recommendations to uh, to full council, etc., or cabinet, or would you just wish for the to wait for the report to be brought back to this committee? Co Councillor Weymouth. Uh, I, I would be happy just to wait for the report to come back to this committee, to be frank. I think that that would be the most appropriate route. I, I would thought that it would get captured in a, either a future LTP or yeah. uh, some other uh, programmes, uh, potentially. So yeah. that would make sense, rather than it coming to Cabinet or full council. seems a bit um, of a needless sort of destruction, I, I think, really. This, this would be the place for it to come. Councillor Foster. Thanks, Chair. I echo that. I'd like to see this come back to this committee as well, um, just to see the progress that has been made, because I am quite concerned about what the lead petitioner mentioned with regards to vulnerable people having to cross that road as well. It is a big safety issue. So, yes, please bring it back, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. I actually agree with that. Uh, and I think on both petitions, they're both very valuable and uh, important work that should come back to this committee. So if we could leave that with you, Neil. Thank you kindly. And thank you for the presentation. Uh, right, back to the agenda. Item six, uh, local service issues. I think we have Paul Martin. I can't see anywhere yet, but uh, Paul, would you like to start, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got a short update uh, this, this time. Um, in terms of waste services, residual and recycling waste collections are continuing to perform well. Um, some other depots are experiencing significant strain due to shortages of HGV drivers, but we are working as best we can to keep the services running um, and to recruit suitable candidates. Demand for the bulky waste service remains high. Uh, the garden waste service is running well. In the Castle Morpeth area, we've had 400 new customers um, this year, which gives a total of 6,800 paid customers. Um, so far this year. For grass cutting, um, the required number of seasonal staff were appointed and we started cutting late March, early April, and the Castle Morpeth area is now on cut three. The start of the season wasn't as smooth as we would like due to interruptions from inclement weather and the bank holders, but the teams recovered well. Uh, we've started um, we're almost complete obstacle spraying with the weed control and we have started the hard surface spraying. And for some general information, the verge cutting's due to start before the next um, local area council update. But the schedules remain unchanged from last year. Work is expected to take two months running from June and July. Um, we've got 6.8 million square metres of verge to cut in the county. Some of this is achieved in-house, um, but we we'll also engage in local farmers to help us through the significant workload. As usual, please bring to our attention any visibility splays that may cause concern due to regrowth, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Paul. Um, Counter Dodd. Yeah, uh, thank you. I've got two or three or four different things. I'll start with the import order of importance. I'm getting an awful lot of email traffic about. Uh, the Belsay 20 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour flash and sign scheme. It's, I think it's one of our only schools, a uh, first school on what I would call an A road. There's no, there's nothing there. The conversation, I, I've got a plethora of emails from people every time there's a bump. Um, when is things that we are promised? I mean, I'm told that the, we're going to get this the flashing signs from West Woodburn School, but nothing's arrived. Or, um, I, and I think there's a great fear that you know things are going to be put in the long grass for a long time. And you know, I've been sending the emails, Neil, 
uh, it, 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 it is getting to a point where they're getting a bit desperate. And it's, it goes back to building houses on the roadside. Not that they're complaining that much. It's, it's the kids and mothers at school times. I would like to think that this can be brought up. I've got the parish of Belsey and Carpeton lined up to put money in. I'm going to put money in if required to enhance, because I know whatever we propose will never satisfy. But at least we've got to make a start. That's the first one, Belsey. The second one is over a year and a half ago, we started on yellow lines in Riverside Close at Ponteland. It's not very long. It's, it's probably just twice the length of this room. Uh, but opposite is the Memorial Hall at Ponteland, who've installed this electronic eye. The, the, the parking at the Memorial Hall used to be free, but uh, a former Castle Morpeth councillor, Robin Ramsey, and his gang at the Memorial Hall put this electronic eye in. So the majority of people don't know I, I, how to use uh, the parking, which isn't expensive, but they're all getting tickets, 60 quid. So we've got a situation where the car park is empty and Riverside, where that had relatively peaceful times is, is you couldn't get an ambulance or anything in there at busy times because it's just rammed with people avoiding these car parking charges and they've been promised yellow lines for over a year and it's becoming embarrassing and the other one was i was at a meeting on at Ponteland with veronica the other day uh, and i heard a traffic warden tell a stranger that you know the discs we have because I was told by Lynn Ryan at uh, car parking that these discs were valid anywhere, from anywhere, as long as you had a disc. And I heard the traffic warden say to somebody who would ask, what do I do for parking here? And the traffic warden said, oh, you need a Northumberland disc. Can I have clarification? Because I've got different discs from different parts of the country in my Doc dockets and I'm told that they should all work. I want clarification on that. And a neighbour of Veronica has contacted me about the Green Homes grant. Because uh, he'd applied for it, been told he got it, now he's been told he hasn't got it. Can anyone answer that? If not, tell us where to go. Or who to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who would like to take... Uh, Okay. So on, on Belsier, we've obviously sent the plans to you, and which is probably why the, where the email the traffic's come from. So that was that's the initial proposal we have on the scheme. So it's it's the the flash and twenty, which was as you see at West Woodburn. We've got countdown markers, purport, well refreshing countdown markers on the six nine six at either end, and putting some countdown markers as you come from Walton. There's also if, if I think there's some additional slows if I remember rightly and there's on the road leading to Bolham Lake there's uh, no footpath for X yards sign with, again with some slow markings so that, that's the, the first proposal um, and I've had a lot of email stuff I think you've probably sent that to me um, but I'm happy to have a chat with you about that and I know you've asked us to go to the parish council meetings so again I'm happy to do that when, whenever that is um, I <laughs> definitely I um, Riverside Close, I was talking to, to my colleague last week who was doing the order. The intent notice is due out, I believe it's this week or next. It's currently with our legal team processing that intent notice. So once that intent notice is out, I would imagine the complaints might die down because they'll, they'll see that something is is beginning to happen. So the intent notice is out, will be out for three weeks and assume there's no no objections, we can go ahead and make that order. So And that will be that one sorted, hopefully. Um, and the other one was about the discs. Discs. Do you want to take that one? Mm -hmm. I'll pick that up with Lynn Ryan of Parking Services. I, I wouldn't mind because there, there was a mm. bit of confusion. I didn't weigh in and say, Ooh, this, is, this, is, this isn't what I heard because it was the traffic ward and I'll, I'll go to the officer. But I, I, I don't know what anyone else has told, but I was told the work all over the country. So I'm just seeking clarity because I've obviously grew up in the law somewhat. I'm pretty sure the discs that I have aren't Northumberland discs <laughs> and, and I use them in Northumberland and no one's ticketed me yet but I'll check with, I'll need to check with Lynn Ryan to make sure I get the right discs if I'm in the wrong. Can, uh, I don't know, do, 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 through the chair please. 
it's, it's okay. Um, actually, I've I've had um, occasions where I've been asked about the discs. Could we have that circulated around all members of this committee? Uh, because it should be any disc from anywhere, as long as you have the, the time on it, I would have thought. Can I suggest that goes out to all members, not just this committee, because I'm sure all of us will get those kind of questions. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I totally agree. Can, can we arrange the all members, including Councillor Sanderson? Well, the, the, prob the problem is, though, that we are actually trying... We, we are one of the very few councils in the whole country that don't charge for car parking. Um, all people have to do is buy a disc for a pound. Um, that is their contribution to being able to park their cars. I think if we were to widely circulate that anyone can, people don't need to bother buying them. If you've got one from Richmond or from Carnarvon, uh, use that one. I, I just think the spirit of the thing is not right. I think, you, you know, it costs us millions of pounds every year to provide free car parking. You know, because it's something that, I, that that's something I want to see happen. I don't think it, I think it would be the wrong message to be putting out uh, to say just bring any disc let them let people buy their own yep uh, yes but I think we and I can agree with all these sentiments Councillor Sanson as, as I fought you for many years on free car parking um, but I, I think we need to know what the legalities are as well Councillor Murphy yeah, just two brief points. I um, absolutely agree with that. When you think we get thousands and thousands of visitors to Northumberland and we're saying that potentially they could be parking for hours anywhere free of charge, I think that's nonsensical for the sake of a pound. And just anecdotally, when I was in Cumbria, just a few months ago, I was told I had to buy a Cumbrian um, disc. So that's, I think it's fairly normal practice for you to have specific to your area. Um, I've got no problem with that, but I would like to uh, to find out the legalities of that. Yeah, uh, Councillor Dunn. Um, yes, thank you. I, I just agree with you, John. I think we do need to find out the legalities because I'll back what Councillor Dodd is saying. That I've been told that by the um, person in the kiosk at Morpeth that you didn't need to have a Northumberland one. You only needed, you know, anything that showed the time was applicable. But if we can have uh, find out the, the legals on that, and if that can be circulated to all council members, please. Uh, Martin is not yet. Are you doing Martin's report? Anybody know? No. <laughs> um, Councillor Foster. Thanks, Chair. If, can I just ask about the weed spraying? Um, that there's no trials going on this year. Just. Parts of Stake Ford were part of the trial last year, and we did have some pretty good growth of weeds in places where the uh, trial wasn't successful. So it's just a check. There's no more trials going on this year. And just out of interest, how did the trial go last year? And was there a favourite? Is there something? Have you changed, or are you sticking to Old Faithful? Or thank you. Uh, no, there's no trials going on this year. We um, we did secure. Um, supplies of, of the, the normal stuff we used last year for this season because the prices were, were rocketing. Um, so we got those early last year at, at a good rate. So uh, I think across the board, unless there's some small pockets here and there that, that um, where something different is appropriate, we're using um, the, the regular stuff that we'd have in, in the past. And no trials going on this year. And the the there is a report being written, um, and I'm sure that as soon as that's ready, I'm not writing it, so I'm off the hook there, but I'm sure as soon as that's ready, it'll be um, passed to councillors and um, parishes and all that sort of stuff. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Councillor Dunn. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask some questions about weed spraying as well, um, Paul, but I believe we're meeting tomorrow anyway, so I'll save them for then. Um, suffice to say, I've got some real big weeds that are growing out of vacant properties, namely, well, I will name it, the old, the, the closed co-op in Linemouth, that actually grown from underneath that, um, you know, the security barrier that they put down. So they're on the pavement coming out from under there. Are we responsible for moving them, or should that be the co-op? 
I would suggest that if those are coming from a private property, we could get um, the highways inspector to have a look at that yeah. and then um, serve notice on them. Yeah, well, we could look but at we, that. Yeah. You could look at that tomorrow for us. And the other question was for Neil, who thought he'd escaped there. <laughs> but Neil, I'm hoping back to the safer schools assessment things. And um, can you remember we met in Ellington not so long ago about the same problem. Have you any idea when that um, sort of report will come back, when there'll be any information on that? Sorry about that. Um, difficult to provide time scales. Um, we normally allow three months on the brief, but I know there's a few people off at the, at the moment, so I'll, it's something we'll, they'll be looking at, but I, I wouldn't let you give a time on. Okay, thanks. Um, I, do, I do have to express a few concerns at how, how long it takes for it to get, and I know it's not your fault, that staff are off, but that doesn't do anything to help the people that you're explaining this to, because it is several weeks since we met the lady in Ellington. Um, so if we can sort of quicken that one up, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Neil or Paul? I can't. Yes, we have two. Mary and then Councillor Jones. Yeah, just really briefly, Neil, you might not be aware of this, but there's a scheme in Sherborne Villas in Toppington where the yellow lines were going to be moved to create somewhere for the resident, local resident to park. Just wondered if you knew anything about that and when it might go ahead. Are these uh, the, the park restrictions opposite the Mowbray Primary? Yes. Um, currently, the line goes over the resident's driveway, um, so they can only park one of their cars. Um, spoke to Terry, and mm. Terry was very helpful and said it wouldn't be a problem to get that line reduced. Right. Um, I've not heard anything since, and I just thought you might be aware of it. Don't worry if you're not, because I can follow it up elsewhere. Right. Um, we can check the, 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 the notice, because it'll be on the notice, because I think that's being advertised at the moment. Is that a notice that I could check as well? Yeah, myself? it's online. It's oh, on, right, okay. Yeah, I can I'll send do you the that. link for that. It's, it's all on the, the traffic regulation order section of the. the Brilliant, website. thank you. Uh, Councillor Jones. Thank you. Um, I didn't know whether to bring this up in this section or in the members' improvement schemes because it is road safety, but it's actually all things that are covered in my scheme. So I'll just do it now and then it's over with. Um, I've got several road safety schemes that Neil's been out and looked at. and. Um, made his decisions and gone away to sort it out, none of which seems to be happening. But more importantly, they're not showing up on my member's scheme at all. And I just feel like they're disappearing. So I just thought I'd go through this sort of, the one at Fenwick, there's the one at Dalton, there's the one at Holton Shield, there's the one at Great Whittington, and there's the one at Map and Standing Stone. And to be honest, I, I'm, I'll bring this up really, this is the highways one. If we can't do that fairly soon, can we at least put something temporary in? Um, because that is, as you know, a difficult crossing. Um, and even our chevron that was knocked down when the um, car went through the wall that it was on, is just lying on the floor. Um, it's not been picked up and it's well over six months. Um, so could we at least look at doing something there? But could we look at the others? But more importantly as well, could they at least show on my member scheme? So at least I know that somebody's thinking that we are going to do them. Yeah. With regard to the Halton Shields one, um, that is, in the, we've got that list as an LTP scheme. It's a, one of our the rural, rural road take, schemes. Take, take that. Um, and we'll insert, I'll be meeting with Sarah's coming at the up in the county hall tomorrow. So I'll, I'll speak with Sarah to see. But those are the, the other schemes. Yeah, and you've got the notes. Yeah, well, haven't yeah. You? So yeah. yeah, thank you. We'll come back to you on that. Thank you. It'd be a case of which ones fit in the year. Yeah. Because it depends on which ones are done first. But you know, there's there's nothing going in for this whole year. Yeah, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll check with her. It might be lost in the tower yeah, of the roof and Thanks. Any more questions for Paul or Neil? Um, Paul's brought along uh, Robin. Um, Really, there's some questions which I've got to ask about the roadworks in uh, in Morbeth, the, the gas, I think it is, emergency works. Um, but I think 
talking to other councillors, there seems to be a, a questions that are asked at all parts of the uh, the local area council. Um, so I've got three questions, but I th it's not just for more, but I think it, it covers all of the all of the county really. Um, the main one. Have the council adhered to and do they follow all the protocols, rules, regulations, and traffic orders? Was the first one. Um, how do officers work with the unit re, um, utility companies? Uh, determine dates and schedule of work, and do officers um, hold traffic? Uh, the traffic's have been held up daily. Uh, do they check with the working practices and uh, and the time scales of the work? And if the utility companies are adhering to those. And I think this is the first time, Robin, you've been to this uh, committee, so could you just introduce yourself and your title, please? Uh, good afternoon, Robin McCartney, Highways Infrastructure Manager. Um, with regards to the works that are ongoing in Morpeth and, and works with utility companies generally, um, there are a whole range of, of uh, legislation within the Highways Act, but the ones that are appropriate to working with the utility companies would be the new Roads and Street Works Act. Um, and specifically within that section 59, uh, the local authority is obligated to coordinate all those utility works and works within the highway. So we have an obligation to carry that out. Um, and likewise, in section 60 of that new Roads and Street Works Act, the utility companies are obligated to coordinate and work with ourselves to minimise disruption on the highway. Um, so that's that's in the legislation. Uh, that goes further in the fact that uh, there is a, a northeast, uh, what we call a hawk meeting, where all the utility companies and local authorities get together to discuss operations on the road. Now, hawk just stands for um, Highways and Utilities Committee. And they all meet on a regular basis to discuss all the planned uh, road openings for utility companies and the local authorities. Uh, within that, we then obviously distill that down to a local hawk meeting, which actually gets down to the nuts and bolts of where each of the openings are and how they're going to impact. And with regards to Morpeth uh, and the, the, the Northern Gas Network works, uh, that will have gone through that process. It will have been planned in advance. Uh, and they've got down to the nitty-gritty of trying to work out what they can and can't do in that particular area. Now, obviously, with these works, they've actually been delayed and delayed and delayed because everyone has known that the impact of being able to do any work at that location will have a massive impact on traffic. So they have been delayed significantly up to this point. It is a health and safety matter. We have to be um, guided by uh, uh, Northern Gas Networks on, on those works happening. Um, and then obviously with the, the uh, Street Works team, um, they have quite a knowledge, long term experience of how these road works impact on the local towns. Uh, and they try and plan out the best way of doing those works. Obviously, the easiest thing for the utility company would be to completely close the works and have the road to themselves to do things as they would like. Um, but that's not going to help the town. And so trying to come up with the one-way system that I believe has worked a number of times before is the most effective way to do the works. Um, I think recently a number of people have noticed no work going on at all. That's because once they actually got in uh, to see what was required, they realised that further work was necessary that at that point was going to close the whole road. And we weren't happy with the concept of closing the whole road. So we had a number of options, which was allow them to carry on and close the road, um, to pull off and plan it for another time, um, or, or, try, or, or pull off until, until someone came up with a different solution. Now, through uh, the HALT meetings and the local HALT meetings, discussing it with them, um, they've managed to come up with a solution that allows them to keep going with the works, but under the kind of one-way system with half the road closed. And that's why they're continuing possibly for another two and a half weeks under that, rather than pull off and wait um, and close the road fully. So that's the position we're at at the moment. Okay. Thank you for that, Robin. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think ask 
if anybody has any questions, Julie, um, not really just relevant to Morpeth, I think it's, it's for the whole of the county. We all have um, roadworks in our areas and we all get, I think, the same questions from the residents. And I think it's great just to have clarification. Councillor Foster. Thank you, Chair. Um, recently in Stakeford, we've had a lot of disruption through um, power cable replacement with National Power Grid. Um, Freedom came in to do the works. There was an awful lot of upheaval in Stakeford. People taking an hour just to travel a very short distance. And thankfully, that work seems to be finished. And as fast as it's finished, another set of traffic lights come up on the roundabout, four-way traffic lights. This time it's BT. But the problem is the residents aren't getting any advance notice. So it's gridlocked. People are late for work. They're complaining for school runs, not being able to get to their children on time because they haven't been able to plan ahead to leave the house at a decent time, thinking it's going to take them an hour just to do a very short journey. So is there a way that we could have the information cascaded down to councillors? Not necessarily one email to every, to, you know, to each 67 councillors with their specific information, but even if it's just one generic email that goes out to all 67 councillors saying this is the list of roadworks that's going to be in the next week, the next two weeks or whatever, so we can cascade that information down to our communities so they can plan their journeys. We've got businesses who have lost out because the gridlock's been that bad. People are going different ways, going to different um, pubs, fish and chip shops, things like that. So it is having an impact on communities. So it's just if we can somehow streamline that, get the information to our residents, it's going to be so much use. So, excuse me, so useful. Thank you. In most cases, there should be uh, local communication of, of the works going on in advance, uh, letter drops through doors, things like that, on the vast majority of works that go on within the county. Uh, however, we, we will come across places that they're not. Um, further to that, everything that we do from uh, um, a road opening permit point of view all goes on the System 1 network, and that's accessible by all the councillors as well and that will identify well in advance any roadworks that are planned, uh, months in advance. Um, now the issue with one network, and when you're looking at it from a councillor's point of view, is it gives you notifications for everything in the county. Certainly I get notifications of everything in the county, um, which, which isn't always that helpful. Um, but you can, as, as a local councillor, um, then filter that system down so that you only get the notifications of roadworks that go on the system for your own area. Now, it could be that uh, we need to pass that information out. So anyone who is wanting either access to the one network system or wants to know how to filter it so they only get the notifications for their own area, um, if you can let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll try and get that information to you or someone will show you and, uh, and work, work you through being able to see that. Thank you. I do actually check the one dot network site um, because it does actually give information, but it's not always there in advance because there's times somebody said what's going on here and I've had a look and the information's not there. And then somebody else will come along a few hours later and they'll find it and post it on social media to say, look, this is what's happening. It looks awful when the county councillor can't find it and actually be able to tell residents what's actually going on. So I don't know if that's, I, I don't know what's causing it. I don't know if there's been a glitch when I've tried to access it or whatever, but I'm not aware of it being something that you can filter and get notifications. It's literally when I just go on and just quickly have a look and see if there's anything coming up in the area which you know, you're know you not doing on a daily basis. It's when you remember and amongst all the other things that you're doing as a councillor. Um, but yes, I mean, if there's a way of getting notifications, I would be very grateful to know how. Thank you. I, th I think that would be actually useful to be circulated around all councillors, because uh, I think there'll be many who don't realise you could do that, if that's possible, Ron. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that happens. Um, from my own experience, um, I've been in exactly that same position where people have been talking about roadworks and I've been adamant that they're not on the system. And then someone has actually showed me 
uh, how to operate the system um, properly. And, and it's just because I've not known how the system works that I couldn't find what I was looking for. So we'll need to try and circulate that um, and move on from there. I think that'll be very helpful. Uh, come to Murphy. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, just briefly, I think I'm coming at that from a slightly different angle. And I'm thinking about people are, they cope with things much, much better if they understand why. And you just explaining to us about what happened with those roadworks in Morpeth and why suddenly people disappeared makes all the difference. And I'm wondering about our use of social media and actually in a particular area, if an, a notice can be put out on our Facebook page saying the roadworks in Stake Ford have stalled because blah. Because what we saw, Julie, when there was absolute eruptions on social media locally was people were going, why? Why have they done it like this? Why have they done it at this time? Why have they done it in this way? We didn't know. We're not party to that information. Um, I think that would be really helpful and that's the sort of stuff people will share. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I might have put that across quite calmly just now, but obviously those three days while it was closed and no work was going on, there was quite a lot of discussion going on behind the scenes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions to Neil or Robin? I see Martin's uh, arrived. Martin, would you like to give your report, please? No problem at all. assist the oh it's a bit loud isn't it <laughs> which will hopefully assist with the the uh, delivery on the ground for the teams the guys should hopefully try it so it'll try and make what work a little bit easier so that might you might we might start to be able to progress and push through a, a, a bit more works um, teams are still continuing to undertake mostly cat one repairs at the moment still off the um, a lot of a lot of catching up to do from the storm still still ongoing um, so we are, we are making some uh, big inroads into that and we, we are seeing so the uh, the sort of backlog uh, reducing quite dramatically now uh, routine inspections are still ongoing um, although still there's a slight there's a slight backlog in, re in relation to routine inspections uh, due to the amount of work the guys are doing in relation to ad hoc inspections. Um, it's a bit of a sort of catch-22, whether we go out and do the third parties or, uh, with the amount of inquiries that we've got or whether we continue with uh, routine inspections. Uh, the Castle Morpeth area has just, just uh, received a hot box for our area, so that's the first time we've had one specifically in just for our area so we'll see a massive improvement in relation to uh, response times uh, to get ad hoc repairs done there's more more potholes in than other works so coming up for 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 next year we've got a lot we've still got a large amount of um, drainage works which were identified during the during the during the storm process we're currently um, prioritizing that 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 works package to go out this year um the, there was there is still a lot of um inquiries from from post the the storms which which have to be balanced out of what we do how we prioritize that workload so it is, it is it's a little bit difficult to try and balance it out best it can if somebody's made an inquiry in relation to drainage from a long time ago as opposed to the drainage which was the damage which was done during the storms to try and get that message across but uh, once we get that program in place, we'll get it out to all the local members, uh, local members where the works are being undertaken, and and their parish and town councils. Um, so we've just started with new refurb, uh, sort of uh, structural patching and and and, and uh, sort of minor repairs um, to complement our pothole repair process. That's uh, the first the first. Uh, sort of program has gone out for there i'm going to try and keep the teams on for 
hopefully six months we've, we've programmed it to get six months worth of work and that's it and that's a split between the larger patch and uh, right down to the the sort of uh, one square metre here just to repair a pothole a permanent reinstatement I'm sure some of you have probably already received um, notification whether it will be undertaking works within within them areas um, and that, that will continue on uh, in relation to ongoing works at the moment the two big ones we've got on is Goose Hill uh, car park uh, it's progressing well we did uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting we did have a few issues and um, in relation to the design and, and getting the, the guys on the ground now the guys on the ground they're hopefully going to uh, claw them back some of that some of that lost uh, lost time still a predicted uh, completion date for uh, or uh, I think it's the end of August I believe um, is that right John was that the date yeah about, yeah um, Although we will be looking at, at that program and again seeing if we can shave anything off that, I wouldn't. I'm not going to make any promises because it's quite a te some of the work is quite technical in relation to the the drainage uh, and the supporting walls around it. So, and the other large job we've got on at the moment is North Road in Pontyland. Uh, that was a mix between a, a traffic road safety scheme and and the LTP resurfacing program scheme. So, amalgamated the two of them together. Um, we started it uh, just before April, just before April, and it's continuing on now. So that's progressing quite well as well. As well. Um, I've got some, I've got some areas of the LTP stuff that were, were programmed that will go in. Like I say, when I share the document, you'll be able to have a look and see what we've got coming forward, and also um, what we've got in relation to patching coming out in May, which is Guy Post, uh, Linton Way, Ellington. Great North Road, Stannington, Beach Court, Darris Hall, C135, Todburn, B6343, or Burnt to Scotts Gap. Uh, that one's probably the biggest one out of all of them due to the length of the road and the amount of the amount of patches that's in there. So and that complements my update for uh, for our area. Thanks that Martin. Uh, come to Foster. Thank you. Martin, you'll be aware of this because obviously I've been in touch with you very recently about the chicanes on the C403. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate obviously storm damage and what have you has had to take precedence for a bit, but this is the history of this goes back way before then. Yeah. Every time there's an accident and one of those chicanes or both of those chicanes are hit, mm -hmm. sometimes the furniture is completely taken out, sometimes it's left bent over. Residents report it. And honestly, if I said it took months, that's an understatement. It quite often, some of these were um, reported towards the end of last year, and they're still there. And that's not unusual. The amount of times I get complaints from people who are saying, you know, I've reported it X months ago, and there's still nobody been out and repaired them, replaced them, or whatever. Yeah. Is there an issue getting the furniture raw or anything like that? And one of, the, sorry, if I can just mention as well, if I can bring highways in, one of the things as well that was brought up, and I appreciate this isn't your area, Martin, but it's the lighting on those chicanes. Now, back at the um, consultation that we had for the A1147, we did actually mention the lighting, and I honestly can't remember the lady's name. She's left now, but she was there. And I just cannot think of her name, but she promised a report would come. She would get that looked into and a report would come for the lighting down that road because the amount of people who were complaining the lighting is just not sufficient. It was unreal. And it's not. I go down that road when it's dark nights and I know where they are, but they're still not that easy to see. They're all dark and it's no wonder that your team are having to, compl you know, quite often come out repair them constantly having to repair because some motorists just aren't seeing them so it's a two-pronged thing so is there a problem as to why they're taking so long and can we have better lighting so this doesn't happen so it doesn't need to take so long thank you probably answer both which i've which i've done this week um a, a lot of the inquiries that come through don't there's a bit of a 
there's a bit of a fall down in between in, in between the reporting system and actually getting to the, the chaps sometimes. So that's the first that's that's first part of it. When they, when they do get them, there is a leading time of a minimum of six weeks generally on on certain types of signs and things like that. So so that's that. But it shouldn't be going on for months if that's the case because we still do have routine inspections and we still do have highway inspectors driving around the area. So I'll get them to be a little bit more vigilant in in that area and, I, and I'll have a quiet word with them. In relation to the lighting and, and the actual design itself, um, the emails that we have been ex exchanging, I've, I've CC Neil in, and Neil Neil's go, Neil, Neil will be having a look at that. So that 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 will be an ongoing process. I'm I'm, I'm, if I'm not speaking out of turn there, Neil. Um, it will probably take a little bit of time to to undertake the traffic and road safety survey, but Neil will probably be able to expand a little bit on that. Yeah, just to touch on that. We'll we'll. we'll I think it's Lindsay Sawyer who yeah probably she so she's left. Um, sorry, no, it was at the consultation. Oh, at the consultation I event. I can't think of her name, but she, she Ruth. Yeah. Ruth. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Right. Sorry, I was <laughs> talking about one. There's somebody left in street lighting. Who we'll we'll, we'll, che we'll we'll check with street lighting as to when if that report was done. Uh, if not, we'll blast them to take a look at that to check the lighting levels down that road. Are they, just out of curiosity, sorry, are they all nighttime accidents or is it, is it when the no, sun's, because I mean, I've heard that there's a problem when the, the sun's in your eyes as well, so visibility. Uh, well, I think sun in your eyes is definitely a problem on that road. I mean, from living there myself mm. for a long time, coming down that road, you do get a low sun, certainly in the winter. So that doesn't help. Icy conditions don't help either when you've got the ice. But... I think some are still trying to use them as um, a challenge, should I say, yeah. to yeah. not slow down, which is part of the problem. But there are genuine cases as well where they're just not that well lit. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think there's a specific pattern that's just happening at night, but there are definitely some nighttime collisions right. with okay. the furniture. We'll get street lighting to look into it. Thank you. See that the lane. Councillor Towns. Thank you, Chair. Um, that somewhat reminds me about a, a, a chicane uh, in Pegswood um, on the, uh, the approach from Moral Bank to Pegswood. Um, I know I've got the opportunity of three highways officers uh, in the room, so, um, but I was dealing by email with um, an officer called Chris, and forgive me, I've, I can't quite recall his surname, but he's been very helpful about it. Now, Chris was looking into the chicane that Barrett installed as part of the Blossom Park development. The latest I heard was some time ago was that uh, Barrett were undertaking a reassessment because this is a chicane uh, of or island that keeps getting hit by cars. Uh, and I think it's gone beyond where the, the level of incidents could be blamed simply on poor driving or people being unaware. There clearly had become an issue with the positioning of this thing. And... Um, I, the last I heard was that the, the County Council had told Barrett that uh, if they simply restored it to how it, how it should be following the latest crash, um, the, the County Council would refuse to adopt it as part of the highway infrastructure. And, uh, and therefore, some suggestions were made about removing it and some other things to be done. But I've heard nothing since. I don't know if any of you guys have any information on that or if you could, could find out for me that, um, after the meeting. Thank you. Uh, was it Chris Westerby you were speaking to? No. I was going to say, we'll check if there is a road safety audit done on that. I don't know if that, I'm assuming there would have been. Um, but we can check with our design team to see if there was a, an audit done on that once it was completed. Come back here. Yeah. Julie. Thank you, Chair. My favourite one, potholes. <laughs> Sorry. Again, it, it is a one I've... I mean, this particular instance is a one, again, I've raised with you quite recently. But I am having complaints from people where potholes are repaired. And within a couple of months, they're back again. And is it a problem with what we're using? Is it a problem where the area needs patching rather than pothole filling? Um, one of the instances that I've mentioned to you is Cambridge Road. That was done not so long ago and the lady who brought it to my attention has come back to me since and said, Julie, they were filled not that long ago and they're all out again. 
So is there an issue there that we can address, please? <laughs> Not really. I mean, obviously, the, the, there's a standard repair process in relation to, to, to filling a pothole in. Um, uh, the tack coated, which is basically a glue type of material, and then they use a hot, hot material to place in the hole, and then that's compacted down and that ideas into it. The problem that you have is that it's because it's normally concaved like that, and there's nothing to actually stop to, to keep the hole, keep the pothole in place apart from uh, apart from the glue that they put in in the hot material, which is bound bind it together. It should really be cut square completely down to the sides, so when so when any traffic's running across it, it's not forcing that movement out. It has to because it's against the square edge. So that's what we we'll get there. Um, and then, and as I explained there before, what we do is we have a reactive process, and then we've got the planned works coming around in, in, in doing the patching for them. There's only a limited amount of money in relation to doing to doing that patching and then minor works. So we try to prioritise them as best we can, using my strategic routes uh, as our first port of call, basically because they're the, they're the most most used. And then and then we we start going down the road hierarchy after that in relation to the long term permanent repairs. The reactive pothole repairs uh, will continue the, the same way in the same process because we have no physical ways of being able to close the road to work safely to to get the potholes cut square and to do that there's just there's just too much work in relation to that to be able to meet the standard national code of practices on the times that we have to repair these these areas so yes while it may look like it's it, it has come out in two three months um you know it, it, it will the guys will have done as, bit, as good a job as they possibly could under them circumstances and if there is any areas which you which you find are becoming repeat potholes and easy we can you know i could look to try and prioritize that um in relation to well, well refurb cutting areas square it wouldn't be every single location because we'll have to prioritize it across the whole of the the, the castle morbeth area um but if there's any specific locations to yourselves i'm more than happy to to have a look at get one of the chaps to have a look at it and you know we can we can put that in and tag it on to maybe some other works within the area thank you thanks for that councillor jones can i am i allowed to just say thank you for the amount of roadworks we've got at the moment um you know from the lcp and the surface dressing program i've i'll be honest i've had so many road closures that i've received both in my ward and the bits of richard dodd's ward that my residents use i've actually had complaints about the road closures and i'm not complaining you can close as many roads to repair roads as you like so thank you very much yes you were allowed to say thank you <laughs> Uh, I think it's worth pointing out, Mr Chairman, that the, the, the staff have had, um, had um, 2.3 million extra this year of new money to spend on our sea and new class road from this administration. It would be wrong to not acknowledge that, and I'm very glad that we're going to be spending that wisely. Thank you for that, Councillor Sanderson. Councillor Towns. Um, yeah, to be honest, I, th I actually think the... Um, thinking about it, I think the roads, certainly where I see them, do seem better. I've seen a lot more resurfacing going on, even on kind of rural roads that normally get very little attention. So actually there's, you know, there's a lot of work going on and I think it is being prioritised correctly in, in, uh, as Martin describes. Um, I did have a question, I've forgotten what it was. It's one of those typical things, isn't it, where you start? Uh, oh, I know, it was a question for Neil, just about an update, please, uh, on the road uh, on the, the road safety scheme at Tritlington School, because I, I thought that had started, but I haven't seen the work actually being done yet. That was going to be doing, there's some resurfacing and maintenance works planned there. I can't remember exactly when, when it is, but the, we, we agreed that, that that would be done at the same time to save. I mean, look, obviously, it looks better doing it in partnership, if you like. Yeah, I can, I can, I can have a look into that for you to uh, find out when it's programmed. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions for the yes, gentleman? There, yes, there is. I'm afraid I'm going to have to just come back to the point about the. Um, the disc, the parking disc. Um, I, I think what we need to do is just um, have a have a look at what the uh, what the current situation actually is before we transmit any messages to uh, councillors, because I I just think it would be 
the correct way to deal with this would be just to have a look at this and then uh, you can come back to me and let me know what the situation is and I'll share that with the chairman, if that's OK, please. Uh, thanks, Councillor Sands. I think we asked um, the officers to come back with the legalities of whether you can use a disc from... Now, we're probably up to the administration to, once the legalities have been decided, because legally they might say you can only use... Um, the disc from Northumberland, but if the if the administration want to come back with other suggestions, they can certainly bring that to this committee. That's fine. That's we'll do that then. I don't want anything said to members at the moment until we know what the current situation is. Well, I think Councillor Sanson, I've stated what well, we're going to. We've asked the officers to look at the legality of whether you can use any disc. Um, I mean, it's, uh, so what's happening is there's just going to be some clarification from the administration and officers about uh, the use of discs from other areas. And I think that the guidance has been uh, sort of half intonated that, in fact, uh, as I think Councillor Murphy's experienced in other places, that uh, it probably should be a Northumberland disc. And my recollection was I've had residents write down on a bit of paper what time they've turned up. Um, and that's not been acceptable, so I, I could imagine that, that would probably be a little bit similar to using a disc from another area as well, because otherwise we would just have people writing stuff on bits of paper and all, all, all sorts of things. And so I think what some the committee standard. I've asked for is legality on this. If I remember rightly, a year or so ago, uh, I read somewhere that there was a legal case where somebody did get fined because they used a, tick, a, a disc from another part of the country. Uh, they were fined and I think they were taken to court and I believe that they, they won the case. So I can't see anything wrong, Councillor Sanderson, in us getting legal, the legal position, first of all, and then it's up to the administration to decide on, on what they want to do. But that has to come back to this committee, I respectfully say. Right. Um, local service issues we have dealt with. Uh, item number seven on the agenda, members' local improvement schemes. Uh, I think Councillor Jones asked her questions. Uh, are there any other questions? Councillor Dunn. Um, yeah, um, I've got um, a couple of things that are quite minor things in, in relation to other big sort of traffic schemes, but they're from the 2020-21 year. And I know they've had some problems going forward. They're, they're quite simple things. It's, it's some um, installation of some bollards to stop motorbikes and, and stuff like that. But I believe one of them's been held up because they can't um, sort of decide whose land it's on, et cetera, et cetera. The question is really quite simple. How, how long do we go on with this just being sort of moving on like this? Or, or at what point do I tell residents that what we thought initially was a quite simple scheme it's, it's just not going to happen. Um, I know that there's been, with uh, Ruben sort of retiring, um, and there has been a delay, but I think Sarah's who's come in, she seems to be working very, very well and getting in touch with councillors. Uh, I can certainly ask those questions for you and come back to the, the, next, the next meeting with an answer for you. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy for them to take time and, and getting installed or whatever but if there's no possibility of them ever happening then I'd, I'd rather tell residents now than just leave it sort of hanging in the air if at the end of the meeting you can give me the details and yeah. i can inquire for you uh no other sorry, sorry? Oh, great excellent uh, with regards to the the member schemes um that comes under my remit as well um, we're in the middle of recruiting a replacement for Ruben that's going to over, oversee most of the kind of programme monitoring and reporting as well as just the member schemes. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to provide you with a report that has an update on all those schemes. Uh, in the interim, um, between the kind of member schemes inbox and working with Sarah, uh, we should be able to give you a, a response to that fairly quickly, if not tomorrow. Thanks, for that, Robin. Yes, I mean Sarah's been in touch with me a couple of times, and she she seems great. So she's some, doing some great work. Uh, Sorry, can I just mention that this was actually circulated, and then we did get updated lists after the agenda went out. So they will be available on the website. The updated list. 
Thanks for that. You did say that. Um, item number eight, local area council work programme, uh, just to note the version that you've, you've had, the new version. Uh, date of the next meeting, uh, Monday 13th of June, which is planning only. Uh, any urgent business? I don't have any, and I don't see anybody else. So we will, at 5.25, uh, close the meeting and thank you all for attending. It's been an excellent meeting. Thank you.